magnetism. Lesson number four, our exercise tutorials, where we use a bit of applied maths to describe the physics that's happening with electromagnetism. So, how the video works. Step one, the exercise question is posed. You as the student can listen to the question, and then you need to pause the video while you have a go at answering the question. Step two, continue to play the video a little bit longer, and I'll give you a hint, an idea of uh, the direction you need to be thinking in. Then you complete the exercise, then you uh, come off pause, continue to play. I'll provide the answer with a worked explanation. That's the power of these little videos. And then continue the video to the next question, of course. So let's get started. Question one, using Fleming's right hand rule for solenoids, the thumb indicates the direction of what? So pause here. This is a hint, hold up your right hand and imagine what the fingers and the thumb represent when you put your hand around a solenoid. What's your thumb pointing in the direction of? So the answer is the magnetic field. It points in the direction of the magnet or the field of the magnet. So your thumb would be pointing in the direction of north, the north pole indicating the direction of the magnetic field. Question two, if a conductor is moved parallel to the magnetic field, the EMF induced will be. So that's question two, if a conductor is moved parallel to the magnetic field, the EMF induced would be. Here's your hint. Think about the angle between the field and the conductor. It's all about the angle between the field and the conductor. So the answer is there'd be none, zero. If the conductor is moving parallel to the field, it's not actually cutting the lines of the field or the flux. Therefore, no voltage is induced, even though it is moving inside the field, unless it's moving at 90 degrees to the field or at some angle to the field, in fact, then of course you get no induction. Question three, the factors that determine an induced EMF. Now that list here of A, B, C and D. A, flux density and conductor material. B, magnetic flux, length, velocity of the conductor. C, length and cross-sectional area of the conductor and D, relative speed with which the magnetic field collapses and the cross-sectional area of the conductor. So pause here. Here's your hint. List all the factors that affect an induced EMF. So have a think about what are all the factors that cause and EMF. So here's the answer. The answer is B, magnetic flux, the length of the conductor inside the flux, and remember the velocity, which also includes the angle of the conductor. So B was the best answer. Flux density uh, is important for A, but it's got nothing to do with the conductor material. It doesn't matter what it is. Its length is important for C, but cross-sectional area has no effect. And D, we're not talking about a field collapsing at all. We're talking about a permanent field. So the answer was B, magnetic flux, length, and velocity. Question four. Maximum EMF is induced in a conductor when it cuts the magnetic flux at an angle of intersection of what? So what's the best angle to cut the magnetic field at? So pause here. Here's your hint. Uh, draw a diagram that represents this situation. So pause again. So 
So at 90 degrees is the uh, is the go. It's got to be at 90 degrees. So if we've got a magnetic field, I'll quickly draw a north and a south pole. North and a south. And here's my magnetic flux. My conductor, this little dot on the screen, has got to be moving at 90 degrees to the field. There's the 90 degrees. If my conductor is in here already and it's moving this way, then the angle is zero degrees. So you'll get nothing at zero degrees. You'll get a little bit. 45, you'll get the absolute maximum at 90 and at 180 you're moving in the same direction so you're not going to get anything for 180 degrees. Five, determine the EMF induced in a conductor of 0 0.3 meters long, moving at 90 degrees the magnetic field at 5 meters per second and a flux density of 1.5 Teslas. So you have to do a little bit of mathematics here. Select the appropriate formula from your formula sheet and then do the calc. So pause here. Here's your hint, E equals BLV. Remember that one, E equals BLV. So pause and have a go at it if you didn't remember the formula or couldn't find it. So here we go, reasonably straightforward. The EMF, little e equals BLV. So we had a um, 1.5 Teslas. Our length was 0.3 and we were moving at 5 metres a second. If we just multiply all three of those together, we get 2.25 or 2 and a quarter volts. Question circuit. The unit of inductance. What do we use for the unit of inductance? So pause here. This is your hint. It's someone's first name. And the answer is the Henry. It was probably named after Mr. Henry, but most people we know their first name is Henry. So it was named after Mr. Henry. So the ohm is the unit of resistance. Watt is power. Farad is capacitance. Therefore, it had to be Henry. Question 7. If an iron core is introduced into a coil, the inductance will increase due to a change in what? So that's question 7. Is it A, the area of the iron core, the permeability of the flux paths, the receptivity of the flux path, or the electromotive force of the flux path? So pause here while you think about it. Here's your hint. Which term describes the ease at which the flux can flow? And the answer is permeability of the flux paths. So the area of the iron core will have something to do with it, but it's not going to be definitive. Retentivity of the flux path is how well it resists. When we're talking about resistance to flux path, we're talking about improvement of it. And electromagnetic force of the flux path is no such thing as electromagnetic force of the flux path. So the best answer was the permeability of the flux paths. 
question eight. Time for another calc. An air cord coil of 400 turns has a cross-sectional area of 5,000 millimeters squared and a length of 500 millimeters. Determine the impedance and the permeability of air is 12.57 times 10 to the minus 7 henrys per meter. So pause here while you select your equation and work that one out. Here's your hint. The inductance in henrys equals n squared area multiplied by the permeability of air divided by the length. So pause here. And uh, here's the answer. So our inductance L simply take our formula, We've got 400 turns multiplied by an area of 0.005, that's what it is in meters squared, had to convert it, permeability of air, and then our 500 millimeters converted to meters is 0.5. Multiply all that together and you get two milli henrys is our answer. Question 9, again an air cord coil of 1750 turns has a cross-sectional area of 50 millimetres squared and a length of 350 millimetres. Again, determine the impedance and again the permeability of air hasn't changed, it's the same. So pause here. Our hint remains the same, L equals N squared A you divide it by L, the length. So pause again, if you didn't already understand that, it's the same as the last question. And L equals N squared A mu divided by L. Again, we had uh, 1700 odd turns. 500 millimetres squared is 0 0.0005. Permeability of air at 12.57 times 10 to the minus 7, and our 350 millimetres converted to metres is 0.35. Again, you multiply all that together, you'll get 5.5 millihenries. Now for our last question, question 10, a little bit different this time. Question 10, an air cord coil of 950 millihenries has a cross-sectional area of 50 millimetres squared and a length of 100 millimetres. Determine the number of turns. So permeability of air, again 12.57 times 10 to the minus 7. So pause here. Here is your hint. It's the same as the other formula, all we've done is rearrange it and made the subject of the formula n. So n is the square root of inductance multiplied by the length divided by the area times mu. So we put all that into our formula and we get 950 times 10 to the minus 3 because remember it was in millihenries. 0.01 for its length, 0 0.5 as the cross-sectional area, times 10 to the minus 6, again we've got to get into square metres, and then finally our 12.57 times 10 to the minus 7, the permeability of air or absolute permeability, gives us 37,841 turns. So that brings us to the end of Lesson 4 Exercise Tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed working through a few problems and questions around electromagnetism and induction.